Now, do you like a night down the dogs? In the southeast, there are greyhound tracks in Hove, Crayford and Sittingbourne. Animal charities used to work with the tracks to improve animal welfare, but now they say they're convinced that the sport is cruel and needs to be banned. Here's Marcella Whittingdale. Ex-racing greyhound Prokey has left his track days behind him. He now feels altogether more suited to life on the sofa. His best friend Elsie yeah. is slightly more energetic. <laughs> yeah, you want that? <laughs> yeah. Prokey and Elsie met at Raystead Centre for Animal Welfare in Sussex and hoped to be rehomed as a pair. Prokey, he's an ex-racing greyhound, so he came to us. Um, he's retired from racing because of an injury. Um, obviously, he'd spent a lot of time kind of in just the kennels in, race, in the racing industry, so we hadn't seen any other dogs except for greyhounds. So we needed to kind of help him learn about other dogs, help him how to live in a home. It tends to be, obviously, because of the high intensity and where they're going from stopping to starting so quickly, um, it's quite an explosive energy um, change. So they will often get kind of back leg injuries, ligament injuries, um, which then, as they get older, makes them more susceptible to arthritis. And it's damage like that, as well as deaths at the track and the number of retired racers put down when they can't be rehomed, which has prompted the RSPCA and Dogs Trust to call for a total ban on greyhound racing, phased in over five years. It is time for greyhound racing to come to an end. Um, in short, your greyhounds are being injured, greyhounds are losing their lives purely for the sake of entertainment. Um, even now with the improvements that have been made, um, you, there's still on average one dog a day dying as a result of this, this industry. Trainer Tony Collett has worked with greyhounds in Kent for 48 years. There are around 50 dogs at his kennels in Mepham currently racing. He says the industry's never been so regulated and a ban isn't the answer. Well, there'd be a lot of dogs to be finding homes for, for starters. Uh, the impact on me, I'm coming towards the end of my years, but generally on the impact of racing, I think it would, it would put a lot of people out of work. The dogs are bred, they're bred for racing. They enjoy going racing. They're not forced to go racing. It's hard work and you've got to love the dogs. Data from the Greyhound Board of Great Britain shows more than 2,000 greyhounds died and nearly 18,000 injuries were recorded from racing between 2018 and 2021. But the industry says they've been tightening up their welfare strategy and that it's working. Well, dogs do get injured racing in the same way that dogs get injured uh, domestic pets and, and go and play in fields, etc. We, we we're not going to shy away from that. Uh, what we are trying to do, especially with our new welfare strategy, is try to decrease those injuries year on year. And certainly when it comes to the deaths of dogs, those dogs that have been put to sleep historically for uh, economic reasons, because treatment costs are too high or because... Uh, they're unsuitable for homey. Those numbers have, have come down considerably in the last three years. The Greyhound Board of Great Britain says a ban would cost the economy around £175 million if racing were to cease over the next five years. But many campaigners and owners of dogs like Proki say if it means no more deaths or injuries, it would be more than worth it. That was Marcella with our report. Rosie, you chair a group of MPs, don't you, that um, looks at dog welfare, lobbies yeah. for dog welfare. Where are you on a ban on greyhound racing? I'm not usually a fan of banning anything, actually, but there's so much evidence that this is just a sport that is quite cruel and difficult for dogs, and I think we're heading towards having to say it needs banning. And it, when the dog charities themselves mm. say that, I think there's, there's, we're running out of choice, really, because these inter the industry has been given so many chances to improve, um, well, they charities, have improved, but is it just well, charities, not enough? No, I don't think it's enough. Charities that report back that have been going in, I spoke to a woman this morning, actually, who's been doing this for decades, they're just not seeing the improvements. And, you know, the report said the dogs aren't forced to do it, but, but animal welfare experts say they feel that they are forced to do it. And a dog a day, like you said in the report, that's just not OK. Mm. And, and then they're all ending up in rescue and rehoming centres. It's just... Is it worth it? I don't think so. You're, like me, a relatively recent convert to dog ownership. Yeah. Does that change things? I mean, there are lots of reasons I why think we so. think the way we do in life. Mm. Is that important to you, the fact we that you've got a We are a nation dog? of animal and dog lovers, aren't we? Yeah. And yeah, I think now that I've got someone, a you know, dog I can go home to every day, I've kind of it really, seeing those dogs, I just think, oh, you know, and mm. we're so close to dogs. Why do we want to put them through that when we don't have yeah. to? I'm sure that chap was really nice and, you know, did the best he could, but not everyone's like that in the mm. industry, are they? And we've got to 
put those dogs first and their welfare but, first. You know, they are arguing that dogs get injured all the time anyway, and that they, you know, they've massively improved in mm. the death status here. And also, there's a much better life for dogs after racing now as well. You're not convinced that that is enough? I'm afraid not, no. It just doesn't look like we've gone far enough. And, you know, a dog needs to be looked after and part of a family home. I don't think they should be working like that if they don't need to. Let's bring Claire in on this one. Where are you on banning things? Rosie says she doesn't like it instinctively, but mm. she's prepared to go for a ban on this one. What about you? No, I wouldn't. Um, I do share your concerns, though, about welfare, and I know that there have been massive, massive improvements, but I do think it needs to go further, and you need to make sure that the breeding process is correct, That's that the dogs are not yeah. being bred purely just keep puppy, you know, having puppies and puppies, and the dogs are well cared for and looked after. So I think there needs to be a lot of work around that, but no, I don't support banning it. And you should know, both of you have dogs. Mm. You can't make a dog do something it doesn't want to do. Get, make my dog get off the bed at night. And that's the point. And these dogs are racing dogs. It is in their nature to chase after mm. a piece of prey. So they do go around. So I, I'm not a fan of banning it. I think okay. that the dogs need to be looked after properly. The um, Mark Bird and others we've spoken to say that this is the beginning of a slippery slope. And, and um, I mean, you're, you're more into horses, aren't you? Are you concerned that they'll come for horses or horse racing next? Is that something that you that And they you? already have. And you only have to look mm. at the protests around any kind of racing, whether it be flat racing or national hunt racing. There is always a protest to say how cruel it is. But again, anybody that's got a horse, if you want it to do something it doesn't want to do, tough luck it's mm. not going to do it and they are bred for a reason and, and again the welfare standards are now so much higher than they were in say the 1980s with the Grand National which everybody complained about quite rightly those jumps are much safer the courses are much safer and horse welfare has come a long long way okay thank you both very much indeed now